Our next speaker is Michael Pergament, working as a systems engineer at Arista Networks, and he will talk to us about IPv4 over IPv6 networks, relying on RC9850. Hello, everyone. Great to have you here. So I'm going to talk uh, today specifically about the use case on how RFC 8950 can be used to solve the problem with BGP peering in IXPs. So my name is Michael Pergament. I'm system engineer with Arista Networks, covering different you know, customers. Some of you are present here, service provider, data center, LAN campus, and what's not. All right. So uh, what is the problem if we talk about BGP peering in IXP environment? Uh, as we all know, the IPv4 public address space is a scarce resource, right? So probably it's not the best usage of those scarce resources if you start wasting those IP addresses just for the sake of configuring point-to-point -point IP addresses. It makes your product more expensive. We see some service providers start shuffling their IP addresses on the peering relationships, causing kind of a havoc between or in the peering ecosystem. So what could be a potential solution to that problem? So basically, there is RFC 8950. It was already mentioned today in the previous presentation, if you paid attention. Um, it was published in 2020, so it's not really a new standard. It's not a novel concept, but actually it is just an extension of even older RFC, which is called 5549, which is going back to 2009. So you might imagine that it's probably commonly used in some other use cases, and it is uh, really a case, and it is data center. But in data center use case, it is used primarily based on other reasons. It's not about you know, conserving the public IPv4 space, but rather making the provisioning or bootstrapping of the data center fabric underlay easy and simple by using link local IPv6 addresses, right? So we basically do not need to configure any IP addresses on your point-to-point -point links, and you have plenty of them in the data center. And then yet another concept is riding on top of this, which is uh, dynamic BGP peering. So effectively, you have link local IP addresses, right? You have neighbor discovery. Once neighbor discovery is done, your BGP peering automatically comes up. And that's what you see in this output, right? You see two BGP sessions running on top of link local. And then what RFC 5549 or 8950 is doing is effectively allows you to transport IPv4 and LRIs with IPv6 next hop, right? So if you look and dig a bit into this older 5549 uh, RFC, it allows you basically to do so for different uh, surface. So basically IPv4 unicast, label unicast, and multicast. Right, and um, what you have as a next hop is IPv6 next hop, and it depends on the length of the uh, length of the next hop. So, if you have 16 or 32 byte lengths, then you automatically can assume this uh, functionality of extended IPv6 is supported, and it's actually negotiated uh, while you establish a BGP session by exchanging open messages. Right. So what is different in 8950? 8950 is just an enhancement. So basically, it allows you now, in addition, to allow this functionality for IPv4 unicast, multicast, and label unicast to support uh, VPN multicast. And it actually has some changes for 128 and 129 surface. So it's layer 3 VPN and multicast VPN, so those are actually not backwards compatible. So if you're using implementation which are riding on top of 5549 for those type of surface, and you have the new implementation of 8950, you're going to hit a problem, interop problem, because those two are not going to be interoperable because of the way how the next hop is encoded. All right. 
So let's see a bit how, how it looks like. So again, if you open the BGP session, open messages are exchanged, you have the new capability. This new capability will tell your neighbor you are capable of supporting extended next hop in form of IPv6 address. And your NLRI looks absolutely the same as before. The only difference is now you check the length of the next hop. If it's 16 bytes, 32 bytes for this particular address, family 1, 2, and 4, then you automatically assume, OK, this is IPv6 next hop. If not, then it's just an old IPv4. The same is valid for 128 and 129. But obviously, the length of the net hops is different. It's 24 bytes on 48 bytes, because you have route distinguisher as well for everything which is VPN. So how does it work? Uh, if you look at all these RFCs, and it kind of implies that if you resolve IPv4 over IPv6 next hop, then there is some sort of tunneling going on. And this is actually absolutely not the case, right? So if you look on the link between those two routers, and if you receive IPv4 packet, what happens on the ingress router is it's going to do a next hop check. The next hop is going to be IPv6 address. And what is going to happen next, this router is going to look into a neighbor discovery table find the MAC address of the peering router and put this MAC address as the destination MAC. So in your data plane, it's still just pure IPv4 forwarding. There is no tunneling involved whatsoever. So as simple as that. So is it supported feature? Yes, it is supported feature. There is nice GitHub repo from OERX, which basically listing all the vendors out there which are supporting those RFCs, right? It actually helps you to find also which configuration is required to put everything necessary in place for a particular vendor. And I guess it makes it just simple for the customers to find out uh, which release needs to be used with different vendors and if it's interoperable or not. So the last thing we did, we put you know, container left, which we are going to put on our public Arista GitHub repo um, in a couple of days. So it's basically kind of emulation of IXP environment and peering with IPv4 and IPv6, exchanging a couple of prefixes. But the result of this entire exercise is going to be that you will be able to see BGP sessions comes up on your interfaces using public IPv6 addresses. So this is the difference between the data center use case where we use link local IPv6. And effectively, you will see the negotiated, uh, negotiated capabilities. So once the open message is exchanged between two routers, where the both of them do support this capability, it will tell you, yeah, this extended next hop capability is supported for which address family. In this particular output, it's IPv4 unicast. And it will tell you, yeah, I advertised it, I received it, and it's basically negotiated. I'm going to use it. And the final result of this exercise is going to be that you still can exchange, exchange your IPv4 prefixes uh, using IPv6 next hops. Again, no change in data plane, no tunneling in data plane whatsoever. So basically, you can get rid of uh, using public IPv4 addresses in this particular use case. This is pretty much it about it. If you have any questions, shoot them. Again, the repo I'm going to share a bit later. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, I need oh. to come up with a question. <laughs> this, this looks like very interesting stuff. I, I'm going to test it. I'm wondering, oh, sorry, <laughs> Gerd Döring, uh, yeah. SpaceNet, IPv6 yeah. uh, geek. How do trace routes look like then? How your trace oh, routes look IPv4 like? IPv4 trace route going through such a hop. Yeah, you will see the IPv6 as the next hop. How does my trace route tool display that? Sorry? If I do an IPv4 trace route, uh, well, and uh, hits, uh, I, the packet I, hits such well, a link, what will happen then? Yeah, good question. Probably it's going to be whatever you define as the source for your trace route. So probably a loop back of your router oh, well, well, IPv4. What, 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 if, I, if, I'm, if my client is right. sitting behind IP an pings. ISP using such a, such a link in the network, and I do an outgoing trace route to Google, 
and the packet hits that unnumbered link. What will uh, it's not it's not an unnumbered link, right? The, uh, will the hit the link without IPv4? Yeah. So the router has no way to send back an IPv4 ICMP because it has. Well, well, well. Why? Why it does? It, it, so it will just use it, some it, other. It will trap it to CPU. The CPU have a source oh, okay. as a Lubeck, which is then used as the source IP address to send okay. ICMP unreachable back. You do the route lookup and send it back. So it will just use it, any IPv4 address exactly, it has. Exactly. Okay. That's how it's going to be. That's right. Thank you. Anything else? No? Okay. Then, thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you.